Vroom. Vroom. Let's go back again. Whoa. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 39 years. I'm gonna test some pizza gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. I would curve this. These wide handlebars, because that's what you want to push against. Give it some eyes. These are the products I'm going to test. Pizza scissors, bicycle pizza cutter, halo pizza wheel, pie cutter press, rock and roll pizza cutter. Pizza scissors. These are designed to cut and hold a slice of pizza. Let's see how effective it is. So getting under, I really need to pull the pizza into the scissors. Not that easy to line up. So this really needs to be a two-handed operation. Not a great looking result just at the finish, but let's see if I can reassemble it. I'm not sure I'm seeing a great advantage to the scissors or to the wedge itself. I think this concept looked better on paper than it does in actual practice. Let's assume you don't have a pair of pizza scissors in your kitchen. Let's compare it to a standard pizza wheel. On a scale of one to five, in terms of effectiveness, I would give this a one. It was a little difficult to use. It took two hand operation anyway. Now I'm gonna try the left-handed oil test. By making my non-dominant hand slippery, it's gonna highlight any deficiencies in the design. Okay, I get a sense this is not gonna work well left-handed. Oops. First slice, I get nothing. Second slice. Now notice I do need my right hand to assist. Let's see, try again. It's not, whoa, lost one. We'll leave that upside down. Boy, that wasn't that much fun left-handed. There is a crossover, especially if you have to hold that slice of pizza. You do with this need to go in a counterclockwise direction. So this really does favor right-handed people. Left-handed people unite. It's got some issues. In terms of usability, I'm giving this a one. It wasn't that much fun to use with, with my right hand, but boy, if you're left-handed, it just adds that much more complication. Let's think about redesigning this. This product is not as well engineered as you would hope. As a matter of fact, the first one we ordered arrived dead on arrival, it was broken. There's not a whole lot holding the plastic piece to the metal scissor blades. If it doesn't break on arrival, it will probably break as you're using it. On the other hand, if it doesn't break on your own, you may just break it out of frustration trying to use it. Right now we have this bevel trying to get under the pizza. I would change that to be a little more graceful so that it more easily slides under the pizza and hopefully keeps the pizza in place. The other thing I would change is to rethink the way this plastic piece is attached to the metal piece. It really needs a whole lot more support, but we're looking at it from this point of view. It seems like, if anything, this should really be much better attached to the metal part or possibly this metal could bend and help support the plastic piece. Now, of course, the other thing that could possibly be done is make this blue part out of metal rather than blue plastic. Because metal, even if it bends, it's, it's uh, more forgiving than these plastic rivets would be. When scissors get this long, you, you lose leverage at the end. So if you have a crusty pizza, it's going to take quite a bit of pressure to finish making that cut. These handles are not that well designed in the sense that they're rather thin here, and as you squeeze, you're going to feel some pressure points. Uh, on your thumb and on your fingers. My buy rating for the pizza scissors is a one. The reason it's a one is because we don't have a zero. Anyway you slice it, you don't want to slice your pizza with this thing. Bicycle pizza cutter. It's designed to cut your pizza while looking like a little bicycle. Let's see how effective it is. Whenever you're riding any kind of bicycle, safety is important, so Safety first. 
So both wheels on the bicycle have sharp edges. So both are designed to cut, even though only the front wheel has spokes. I'm gonna try to go across. Boy, the front wheel is really cutting it, so the back wheel is kind of redundant. My fingers and my wrist is precariously close to the sharp wheel as it's spinning. This is great if you really like pizza and you really like bicycles. Otherwise, I'm not sure why the two are coexisting on my pizza table. I'm gonna put on some cut resistant gloves and let's try this again. If you're gonna ride this over your pizza, I would say ride carefully. You may find you have not only pepperoni, but a few drops of blood on your pizza. Let's see how it compares to a standard pizza wheel. In terms of effectiveness, I would give this a one. Uh, it cut the pizza okay, although it does look like a little bite. It does that okay. Time for the left-handed oil test. I'm not looking forward to this. I feel like it's gonna be a little dangerous. Living on the edge. Let's give it a shot. Well, let's try both wheels. Again, my fingers are a little too close to that blade. Boy, not wonderful. That was pretty unstable, and um, I felt like I really had to squeeze down on this thing to stabilize it. Maybe training wheels would help. Let's put some training wheels on this baby. Nothing here is really designed to be held. It really is designed to be sat on by a very tiny person. Well, in terms of usability, I would rate this, uh, this has to get a one. This is just not easy to do and it's just not easy to grab and it's really no fun. This could work if you had a trained hamster and you wanted the hamster to cut the pizza. But I, actually, I'll take that back. There are no pedals on this bike. Let's see how I would redesign this. I think instead of basing this on a racing bike, I think I would base this on a 1950s Schwinn because that would give you fenders and that would keep your fingers away from the blades. It would also give you some sizable handlebars, maybe with some streamers coming out of it, and a pretty fat 1950s seat. So the fenders, I think, would keep your hands and fingers away from the sharp blades. These wide handlebars would give you a little more to push down on, as would a big fat 1950s bicycle seat. So yeah, I think I would have gone retro with this. And it'd probably even look better sitting in your kitchen. My buy rating for the bicycle pizza cutter is a one. But I think the risk of uh, bloodshed is a little too high. I know what you're saying, lighten up, it's a bicycle. It's a cute little thing. I like bicycles, they just don't make really good pizza cutters. Halo pizza wheel. This device is designed to cut pizza either using one hand or using both hands. Let's see how effective it is. In its closed position, the blade is rather well protected by the ring. I'm gonna press this and open it up. And let's try this first using one hand over this pizza. The wheel is nice and large, which is great. So it's gonna run over anything you may have on the pizza. Trying it two hands, I can get that much more pressure on it, leaning into it with both hands. So I'm really putting some body weight into it at this point. This cut this pizza pretty easily, I thought. Let's see how this compares to a regular pizza wheel. In terms of effectiveness, I would give this a five. Uh, there are a lot of things I like about it. It's pretty stable and it's pretty well built. I like it. The pizza wheel has landed. Let's test its usability. I'm gonna oil up both hands since this is a two-handed operation. If you're curious, the skin of my hands is still fantastic. Let's try it first, lefty, one-handed. And it cuts, I will say it's kind of uh, susceptible to falling out with a slippery left hand. Try it with both hands. Using both hands, even if both hands are slippery, I don't see any problems. One thing I like about this is that it's cleanable because the blade can be removed. Ooh, not as easy as I hoped. 
because there's no real good visual cue. There are some graphics on here, but man, they're really subtle. Here's something that could be improved, is the ease of removal of the blade. There it goes. In terms of usability, I would give this a four. It is a bit droppable. It's okay, little spaceship wheel cutter. You're new on this planet. You're a little weird, but we like you. For a redesign, there are a couple of things I would try. First of all, the difficulty with holding this with one hand, I think can be solved pretty easily. Almost any shape here would help keep it in place. So give a bit of an undercut so that when you grab this, you've got something to grab onto. The other thing I would do is, is rethink this wheel a bit or the locking mechanism here. Right now, it looks like this. What I would do is instead of this curve going this way, I would have that curve go this way because that's what you want to push against. And then for the graphic, which you can't see, which is molded in red, I would put a traditional lock symbol in the lock position and a pretty traditional unlock symbol in the unlock position. Otherwise, uh, I'm good to go with this. For a buy rating for the Halo Pizza Wheel, I would give it a four and a half out of five. It just has a couple of faults, but I do like it. I think it's preferable to the uh, traditional pizza wheel. Good job, spaceship-looking Halo pizza wheel. You are proof that there's intelligent life on other planets. Pie cutter, press. Its purpose in life is to cut eight slices of a pie evenly all at once. Let's try this now with a small personal pizza. I'll place it as even as possible. Give it a press. I'm gonna rock it a little bit. Pizza's coming up with the blades. See how I did. So it's pretty well separated. It will take more pressure right over the handle. So the handles are on this side, which means as I'm pressing down, there's gonna be more pressure on these slices than there are on the slices uh, to the outside. And they kind of stick together. The cheese is not behaving. Not a great first impression. Get it? I'm gonna turn this around and try the larger size uh, blades the blades were more even, maybe it would help. But no, I think we're still sticking together. We're not totally cut through. But the problem is, it's just not finishing the job. So you're really gonna need another tool to go in here and complete your task. Let's see how this compares to a more traditional pizza wheel. This made me sad. In terms of effectiveness, on a one to five scale for use on a pizza, I would give this a one. It just wasn't cutting uh, well at all. If you're gonna cut pizza, you better cut pizza right. This device can only be used with two hands, so I'm gonna put oil on both hands, make sure they're both super slippery. And then let's try it again. Uh, since you're pressing down, it really doesn't make a big difference if your hands are slippery or not. But uh, boy, this isn't being that successful. One-handed, two-handed. Slippery or not. In terms of usability, I would rate this a one. I just don't think it's very usable and it's not very uh, efficient. No love for the eight slice pizza cutter. Okay, let's see how I would redesign this. There are a couple of thoughts that come to mind. Right now the blade looks like this. And this is where the, uh, the ring sits. I would, instead of going for flat, I would curve this because curving this means you have the option of rocking it to make sure that you're cutting all the way down to the edge. It's also going to reduce the surface area that you're cut, cutting at any one time, so it's gonna require less pressure to cut. The other thing I would do, of course, is change these handles to something more substantial that you can get your hands and fingers around and really press down on. I don't know if there's a way to disassemble this before cleaning, so I would experiment with that. Cleaning this may take much longer than cutting the pie by hand would have taken. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the pie cutter press a one. It just isn't effective. You're gonna to have to use a second tool anyway. The other problem I have with this is just philosophically, why use a device that will cut eight evenly sliced pieces when your real goal when cutting by hand is to try to get the largest piece? It just doesn't make any sense. Rock and roll pizza cutter. This is designed to cut pizza in a rock and roll kind of way. Let's see how effective it is. I've got a mushroom pizza in front of me. Let's put it to the test. I'm gonna start almost on the very tip here at one end of the pizza, one end of the crust, and keep rolling. 
As it goes further than you would think, it looks like a small tool, but actually by the time you cover that distance of the curve, it really gets across the pizza. And also, this blade is actually pretty sharp. So it cut without a whole lot of effort. I'm gonna try going across because your range of motion in this direction is much greater. The pizza slices are very well separated, so I'm a happy camper. Rock and roll indeed. Let's see how this compares to a regular old pizza cutter. In terms of effectiveness, I think this is pretty good. I would give it a four. A traditional pizza wheel still beats it out, but this is a pretty close contender. I've got oil on my left hand. Make it as slippery as possible. Let's give it a test. So again, I'm gonna go side to side because that's the way my wrist works and yours. But with a slippery left hand, it is really no better or worse than using my right hand non-slippery. In terms of usability, I would give this a two. It's fun to use, good geometry, but can definitely use some improvement. Okay, let's talk redesign. First thing I would do is give it some eyes and a cute little button nose and maybe some wild, wild, wild hair. Done. Okay, I have a couple of thoughts. First of all, the shape doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I would just give this a curve. And then because you're pushing down with your pinky and down with your index finger, I would make this part of it as friendly as possible. Uh, this part of it, you're not gonna feel if, as long as it's large enough for your fingers. The other thing I would do is do something very similar up top. I would give that a curve. So the size doesn't really have to increase very much. But from this point of view, since this product is molded side to side, it would be very easy to widen this. And I would give it something a little more structural, a little more sturdy to press down on. It is also a little unstable in that direction. It's a little skinny to hold on to. In a similar way, I would give more surface area here to the finger pieces. The finger is gonna sit here squeezing this. So I would make sure the cross section on the finger part is conducive to grabbing and squeezing. So what that means is your hand will come around this entire area. That would make that a lot more stable. In terms of a buy rating on a one to five scale, I give the Rock and Roll Pizza Cutter a solid three. It does its job, it's okay, but it could be so much better. Rock and Roll Pizza Cutter, rock on. Everyone loves pizza. If you don't love pizza, you're probably not from New Jersey like I am. Some of these gadgets did a better job than others at slicing pizza. In the end though, you're eating pizza, so how bad could it be?